Hi, I'm Rick Kearns with Garage Gurus. Today we're going to properly bench bleed a master cylinder. A couple of things you want to make sure that you have on hand is some wrenches and screwdrivers and a good depressor for the back side of the piston. Make sure that you have a kit, a master cylinder bench bleeding kit. These are available from many tool suppliers. And then also make sure that you have the proper brake fluid before you start the job. We've got a dot three or a dot four. How do I identify? Take a look at the cap on the old master cylinder and you'll identify right away that it says dot three. So that's the type of brake fluid that we are gonna be using for this system here. A Couple other checks that you wanna make before you start the job is to look at the configuration of the master cylinders themselves. Note where the fluid level sensor is, what type of connector we have on there. Make sure that those are the same. Very important is to take a look at the back side of the master cylinders and you'll notice the sealing device, whether it's an O-ring or a gasket, whatever it may be, make sure that those are the same. We don't want a vacuum leak from the brake booster. Very difficult to find sometimes. Make sure that the push rod will be the same contact between the old and the new. Otherwise, you'll have a pedal that is too low or you'll have a pedal that has no free play and the brakes could lock up once they start to heat up. All right, so once we've got all our pieces there, one final check before you start actually putting fluid into it is to take a look at the, the fitting size configuration. Make sure that the fittings you're gonna use are the same on the old master cylinder and the new master cylinder. So I check it very quickly on the old one, and then if it fits the new one, we're gonna be in good shape. This way, when we go finish the job here and go to put it on the vehicle, we won't have a problem with the wrong fittings connecting to the master cylinder and have to start all over again. So that's just a good quick tip. So I've got my fittings in here. I've got to snug them up. Let's get them, uh, get the master cylinder installed in the vise. I've got a set of soft jaw clamps here so I shouldn't cause any damage to the backside here. That could affect your ceiling there. Next step is to remove the cap, get my fittings installed here, and I should make sure I snug them up and you don't have to over tighten these. These are all aluminum. You don't want to cause any damage there, but I don't want any air to leak in there or fluid to leak out, and I, but I want to make sure I don't damage the threaded areas. All right, make sure I install my lines, and these lines are just going to allow the fluid to flow out of the master cylinder and right back into the reservoir. Sometimes I'll have a, a retainer here to help do this. Once I, I'm going to put them right down into the bore, so as I depress, my pistons, I'll be able to push the air out and then it'll draw in any excess fluid so I don't trap any air or allow the air to come back in. So let's get started here. I'll open up my dot three. I try to start with a new container. Like I say, don't make them too large. Uh, break the seal on it. And that way I've got some good fresh brake fluid. Once I fill that up, you can overfill it at this time. It won't cause any problems. And I want to make sure that it runs down here, make sure I don't have any leaks as we fill it up. The air will start to bleed down. Now I do want to make sure that these lines stay in that master cylinder. Sometimes I'll put something in there to, to stop it from allowing the lines to come back out because I don't want it to uh, have fluid running all out all over, kind of making a big mess at that time. So I'm just kind of kind of keep those in there. Now I want to depress the pistons fully, slowly, so that you can actually start to see the fluid coming through the lines. And the goal is to get nothing but fluid in those lines. So you'll see air bubbles coming up through, and just do it slowly, don't rush it. Take your time, and you'll get some nice, good, clean fluid coming through here. And as you can see, these air bubbles start to rise. And I'll slowly come back once again Allow the fluid to run down into the master cylinder before you depress again. And as you see, there's small, very small, tiny air bubbles that is coming out of here. And we're looking in pretty good shape here because we're getting most of the air out. As you can see, it push out. I got a little tiny air bubbles here, giving it just a moment. Okay, so this will take just a few moments. As you can see, there are very tiny air bubbles that are still starting to rise here. So I'm not gonna rush the job. If I try to rush the job, put the master cylinder on the vehicle itself, all of a sudden I've got a spongy pedal and I can't get the air out because the master cylinder is sitting 
too far tilted backwards or forward. Uh, when I'm on the bench here, I can do a number of things. I can remove the master cylinder and rock it back and forth. I'm pretty parallel right here. I am um, slightly tilted up. I've got a port that's coming all the way to the front of the master cylinder. So my, uh, I have a good opportunity to get all of the air out. And I'll depress it once again. You can see some very, very, very fine air bubbles that are in the system. And in a worst case scenario, make sure that you properly tighten the fittings. I feel pretty confident, but I'm gonna double check it anyways, just to make sure. Because if you're drawing any air into those fittings, that could cause the air that you'll see in those lines. Okay, after being very patient and checking to make sure that all of our connections were extremely tight, we are now in good shape. We finally have gotten the air out. So don't rush the job as you've seen here. Uh, very often you'll be pushing it very quickly. You'll get small bubbles in here. I know that you're trying to get the job. The customer's probably waiting. So take your time, be very, very thorough. And once you do that, you'll find out you'll have no more air bubbles coming through here and you'll have good success when you go to install this master cylinder. So thank you for watching and we appreciate your business. So make sure you stop by Garage Gurus to learn more about all of our products and systems that incorporate.